At school, I CNC milled, and I also laser cut these panels. They fit together to a pedestal. Ta-da! Out of context, this pedestal looks tiny. Like, here's one of my hands. But in the airplane, it looks huge. I don't know what it is. Big mistake I made with this, however, is that this pedestal is actually too tall. And you can't easily remove the panels like I designed so elegantly in my simulator. We'll have to learn about tolerances. Tolerances are basically what you'll tolerate. Um, so it's a deviation from a measurement, whether that be heat, or in our case, linear measurements like millimeters and inches. One thing that's cool about tolerances is that they can be minus, which is called lower deviation. It can be positive, uh, which is called upper deviation. And it can also be like a plus or minus, so that's called a bilateral deviation. Cool words for what I've been calling, yeah, just get it close enough. I've always thought of tolerances as it has to be eh, kind of close but it can also have a tolerance to a fit. We don't care about how long this thing is, technically. As long as all of the rest of the dimensions are right, this should come into play uh, more or less naturally. So we don't care if this is 19.2 inches or 19.25, but we do care that it fits down on the floor and allows you to slide a panel on, take the panel off. That's its uh, kind of column. The best way to figure this out, I would say, would be to take the dimension from the bottom of the panel, the little hump, and then take it all the way to the floor, and then subtract just a little bit uh, for any slack you want. So maybe subtract like an eighth of an inch. You also have to keep in mind thickness of any carpet or upholstery if you want to add anything like that, if you want to have a super snazzy simulator. So you'll have to account for pr probably another little bit. While we're on the subject of tolerances, I actually thought it was super cool because there's a few types of like fits into holes. Um, there's the clearance fit, like these two pieces. Um, when you put them together, they can always fit together and slide like this. There's also a transition fit. This is like if you put a cone into a hole. So if you have the tip of the cone, um, won't be as big as the hole, so it'll be a clearance fit. But then the end of the cone is actually bigger than the hole, so somewhere in the middle it'll intersect, which is kind of cool. There's also another one that's called the interference fit, which I think is kind of funny, because you intentionally make the thing you're trying to put into the hole uh, bigger, and then you, yeah, it can't fit, so you have to heat this up um, for it to fit, and then it, when it cools, it goes in. So that's really cool um, that you're, like, messing with the metal enough about tolerances, let's get back to building. I think I'll end up trimming about three or four millimeters off the bottom of this, uh, seeing how that fits. For this, I'm not thinking it needs to be an exact science, it just needs to have a little bit of slop. All right, now we can clean out the sim and test if it fits. So already I know something uh, that you don't. The rudders don't fit. <laughs> so uh, if you want to control the airplane, this is not your day. But I'm gonna combat that by just removing the uh, left pedestal temporarily until I design my own rudders that are two Cessna specifications and not Logitech's goofy, not cessna -ness. Put this in and we'll see if it's great right now. It's actually a little too short, you'll see. Uh, why is that? Come on, Bob, you're stupid. That is because I wanna add carpet to the simulator. The carpet will need just a little bit of space. Actually, to be completely honest, I wasn't going to add carpet for another few days, but I uh, cut these too small, so we're adding carpet. For the assembly of this, the Cessna 172 doesn't really have any screw holes on theirs, so I was thinking of avoiding that, if possible. Um, for me, I'm going to use these 90 degree brackets and just fix them into place. So it'll be something like this. Of course, I only have one 90 degree bracket, which is just the way things are going right now. Carpet costs $5 a square foot. Five times two times four for the dimensions of my simulator is $40. But stealing carpet from your flight school is free. It's not stealing if it's on the curb. Just like the planes at my flight school, this carpet has seen their better days. 
So uh, we're gonna slice it up and put it in my simulator as if that's cool. Oh. Speaking of flight school, I think that's one of the planes up there right now. I'm gonna start by slicing this carpet into six feet by three feet chunks. Uh, that'll let me have four chunks uh, for each of the four potential sections. Once I have those sections, I can cut them smaller and go from there. Try to uh, fit it to the simulator. This still smells like my fly school. We have our piece right here. It is four and a half by two and a half feet. I cut it a little oversized so we could select the best part of the fabric. And now uh, we just get to place it into the simulator. I know that there is the profession of carpet layer where you, your whole job is laying carpet, but I'm, I'm sure I'll get it in five minutes. Can't be that hard. I can show you my sim. It took me about three years. It's so big and it's kind of clunky. It's getting heavy. A whole carpet. It smells like my flight school. I don't know why. And I'm not good at singing. <laughs> what the heck? This is not an OSHA certified way of cleaning carpet, but we're gonna do it anyways. Hi neighbor, how are you? I'm doing good, I'm just uh, watering my flight simulator. It was a rousy pool party the other day, a lot of, a lot of swimming. I may have looked like an idiot in front of the passing cars, but don't worry, it's not the first time, I'm a professional. But, we did have time. For these to come out of the sun oven, by the sun oven I just mean the sun. So we'll get these screwed onto the simulator, I'll drill holes in these. Uh, the final ones won't actually have holes, they'll have mounted things inside it to make sure it's as clean as possible, but this is good enough for me. Okay Siri, set an alarm for 30 minutes to flip my carpet in the driveway. These are 2 inch or 50.8 millimeter brackets. I finally painted these so we get the actual color. This bottom one I can screw in place, it has screw holes. These top two I can drill my own screw holes or just tape temporarily. As of now, I haven't designed the trim wheel and the whole shebang there. For now, I just get to tape them together so that they have to bend. Do you like your carpet medium rare or well done? I think I'm actually going to end up using an old medieval uh, carpenter trick um, called not measuring it at all. So I think that might work the best. So the first part of not measuring is to measure out the distance. Dang it. <laughs> These stringers right here are two and a half inches, about. So I just need two and a half inches in addition to the length from the edge to the edge. So that's basically how much carpet I need. So I can basically measure up here two and a half inches, and then at the base, I just need it like two and a half inches, like maybe there. You can scoot it over, make sure it's consistent, make sure it's square, and now I think I can cut it. And now I want to make an edge right here. Just kind of to keep the appearance consistent. And I'll need to cut a notch right here.
Just like all the teenagers walking around town in the winter, this could probably use another coat and some pants. But I think it fits really nicely into the panel. Maybe. <laughs> when I added the carpet, it actually added, uh, added exactly the amount that it needed to be right at square one, where it's hard to remove the panel. So this time I'll cut it more carefully, um, maybe just a little bit more, but I really like how this looks. It's so fun sitting here because now we have like the whole simulator and now we have control over our fuel so we can just say no, 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 I'll take it from here, left tank. Bing. This is so cool. You get to hit all the buttons, this is like my childhood dream. Bing bong, bing bong. <laughs> if you want to, you can use a roundover bit on your router table if you have a router table, of course. And you could just round this edge over, and that'll allow just a little bit of more realism. This just adds a little flavor. If you look in here, there's a top bracket and a bottom bracket. I did them this way instead of having the top and bottom at the same level, because if you unscrew this bracket, then this bracket will interfere with it. It shouldn't really matter too much, ultimately, if you install it slightly off-center, as long as the humps right here come in into the pedestal. You have a little bit of slack either way, but I'm going to measure it because I would like to measure once, do once. That's my thing. Where you measure from is also important, because if I measure from here to here, this might be a little bit off from the panel. So make sure to measure from the panel. Um, either that or from the floor. For this pedestal, I want it to be roughly centered. I should have used a much prettier number than 41. Now I can use these 90 degree brackets and fasten it down. A long screwdriver should help with this. This has been a really good project to get done because once I go off to college, it'll be a lot harder to have access to a workshop. I'll have to go into a lab or something like that instead of hopping in the old garage. So right now, all of my priorities are any big projects that require like CNC milling, uh, wood materials, like table saws, stuff like that. When I'm in college, I'll work on smaller instruments like the radio stack and all the instruments, fuel instruments, nav instruments, uh, and all of the projects, and hopefully I can get it all as realistically as possible. The Cessna 172 project. It's the project I installed a glove box before I installed the radio. It's the project I installed an Awuga horn before I installed the controls. And it's the project I installed a microphone before I installed the trim wheel. For the microphone of the simulator, I'm actually going to take apart a bullhorn. Yeah. I've had an Awuga horn in the front of the simulator. This really wasn't something necessary, but it was the best $20 I've spent in my life. That part got taken apart, so we're gonna add a bullhorn. Why not? Huh. So this whole casing is just a piece of plastic that amplifies the sound. There's this part that acts as kind of the um, sound director, and it's kind of interesting though because the sound comes out, it's vibrated with a little speaker, but that speaker goes through this tube that kind of acts like a trumpet, but then gets bounced off of this tube right here, goes back down, and then gets blasted out this side. So it's basically taking a little speaker, putting it through a trumpet like type horn bouncing it back down and putting it through a bigger horn, which is pretty cool. I wonder why they do that. I imagine it's because uh, they need it amplified. I don't need it amplified twice. Um, it'll just kind of blast into the cockpit over the PA. Just, just 
I don't know, kind of a fun detail. This is more than loud enough, so uh, I think we should be good. Funny story behind this megaphone, uh, my parents really wanted me to get my Eagle Scout, so I said that I would put in all the work to get it if I could get a megaphone. And so here's the megaphone that, that was, that I got after I got my Eagle Scout, so. <laughs> I don't know why I was so fixated on a megaphone, but here it is. Now it's taken apart and it's part of my passion project. Because we took apart the megaphone, there's this little trigger that's part of the casing that shuts the battery door. Uh, we can design our own shutting battery door thing into it, uh, or just tape it down. I'm kind of feeling tape, tape it down is a better solution. But even better than that might be uh, cutting this black and white, uh, black and red wire right here. And um, taking that and hooking it up to a power supply. So each of these batteries is 1.5 volts. There are six batteries, so 1.5 times six is nine. So I can hook up a nine volt power supply to this, ta-da, nine volts, and then it's gonna be hidden right inside the pedestal. So in my simulator, I used to have a fire extinguisher stored here, but now I think we're gonna put the megaphone here instead. Because, you know, if you have a fire extinguisher in your simulator, you're just asking for a fire, let's be honest. In actuality, I think I'll have it clamped right here so you can actually access it. Um, and I'll also get a new one because this one is empty. There's still stuff in it, but not enough for a fire apparently. So we might just have to like play around with a fire extinguisher in the backyard. You can get these refilled, but this is older than I am. So I think we'll just not. So I fixed the problem, don't have to design an engineering solution behind it. Um, and it also doubles as a volume lock because when you put the volume too high, it just hurts people's ears. Um, probably not without the horn, but still it's annoying. So turn it on here. And then from the front of the cockpit, you got a microphone, which is kind of fun. So, that's pretty cool, uh, and I like the muffled sound. Um, you, it's kind of the stereotypical <laughs> kind of vibe. So, so yeah, this uh, right here is a party trick. Um, instead of a actual physical thing, it doesn't interface with uh, VatSim yet. It doesn't interface with um, any like audio. Uh, it's just fun to have something to like talk into, to make announcements. Like we're flying all passengers next. Who wants the next turn? And, like something fun like that instead of um, having to use your inside voice. Next up is to redesign this to look more like a cool microphone than a loser microphone. So oh, no offense. Thank you so much for tuning in to this fantastic episode of the Cessna 172 Project. Thank you to all of the wonderful people who support this channel. Uh, thank you to the flight school for, uh, they didn't exactly let me, but thank you for the carpet anyways. Um, and uh, <laughs> if you're interested in more videos, check out some of the links up here. Uh, check the link in the description below for all the files to this, and I will see you later. Have a fantabulous rest of your day.